Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast Podcast, Episode 3. Got a lot going on today. We've got a carbon steel update directly from Matt for itself. We're going to talk a little bit about carbon steel paella pans. Maybe go through some sales and inventory updates between Debouille and Matfer. We've got a mini review of a french fry slicer. Going to continue the big box battle with more olive oil talk between Costco and Sam's. Let's get started. Now to get into the carbon steel update for today, I want to start with some viewer mail. George P. wrote in about a carbon steel paella pan. He says he wants to get a Maviel M. Steel paella pan. Since it is carbon steel and needs seasoning, my only problem is when making paella, you need to cook with tomatoes, tomato paste, and sometimes lemon. And goes on basically to ask, if you get a carbon steel paella pan, can you actually cook paella in it? It has all those acidic ingredients, is it gonna mess up the seasoning? Well heck, I don't know. I've never made paella, but I told him I would try and find out for him. Now I've had trouble getting in touch with Maviel, but I know that Matfer also makes a carbon steel paella pan. They're very nice about responding to inquiries. So I reached out to them and asked them, and here's what they say about making paella in a carbon steel paella pan. What we usually recommend to people is that black steel is not the tool to use to simmer, braise, or develop tomato-based sauce in. That long, slow application of acid will do some damage to your lovingly developed seasoning. I guess we all kind of pretty much know that, but what about paella? They say a few tomato elements for a short period of time and you're probably good. With paella, you generally don't do a lot of stirring as you want to develop that nice crusty socarrat on the bottom of your paella. For this, black steel is the perfect tool. A few tomato elements won't do much damage. That said, it's all a bit of a dance. Some like to beg their black steel pans forgiveness instead of ask for permission. So reading between the lines there, if you cook that tomato-based paella sauce for a long time in your carbon steel, you might take off some of the seasoning. However, I don't think I would worry about it all that much. What I did do is go on YouTube and watch a bunch of paella videos. And they all seem to use carbon steel pans to cook their paella in. And I noticed that in every one of them, the carbon steel seems very, very shiny. It doesn't seem to have any of that dark seasoning on there whatsoever. I think I would just go ahead and try it, and worst case, you can always just re-season your paella pan if you take some of the seasoning off. So Now, as I was talking to Mapfer, they gave me a couple of updates on their pan supply. As we know, some places have been a little bit spotty on inventory with all the COVID shutdowns and so on. Mapfer's been pretty good up until now, but they say they're stretched, and I quote, a little thin on their inventory of 11 and 3 quarter and 12 and 7 8 inch pans. They say the supply is good on crate pans and smaller sizes of the black steel. But if you've been thinking about getting one of those bigger sizes and been sitting on the fence, well, maybe now is the time to get on the stick and get one if you want one. They also said they bumped up the warranty on lots of their products. As it relates to our little corner of the universe here, on the black steel pans, they bumped that up to a limited lifetime warranty. There's no moving parts on these pans. It's pretty much a handle welded to the body of the pan. Not a whole lot of downside risk for something going wrong, but it's nice to have anyway. Another quick note on pan supplies. This week I posted that review of that Debouille no stainless line copper French frying pan. Very nice pan. Those are sold out in a few different sizes on the Debouille site. If you happen to be looking for one of those, they say more will arrive this month. This is October. Should be some more there this month. If you hunt around on Amazon, you can find them sometimes. Sometimes they come, sometimes they go, sometimes there's deals, sometimes there's not. So if you're looking for one of those pans, it pays to shop around. Okay, continuing the big box battle between Costco and Sam's. In the last episode, we looked at olive oils at both retailers, kind of some of the name brand olive oils they stock. I was back at both stores this week, and this time I want to take a look at more of the bulk kind of store brand olive oils they have. Starting with the Sam's Members Mark Extra Virgin Olive Oil. I know that it does not say Italian on the front. On the back it says, Ingredients Extra Virgin Olive Oil. Extra Virgin Olive Oils produced in Italy, Greece, and or Portugal, and or Tunisia. Mm. Now it says bottled and packed in Italy. It doesn't say pressed in Italy. So what may be happening, who knows. They may be pressing oils in Tunisia and Portugal shipping that to Italy, then bottling it there so that they can say that it's bottled in Italy. Now, I don't know exactly, but that kind of erodes my confidence just a little bit. 
Let's compare it to the Kirkland Signature over at Costco. First thing we see is 100% Italian extra virgin olive oil. The word Italian on there, that's good. They also have a mark that says product of Italy, that's good. Produced from Italian grown olives, also good. Then if you look on the back, traceable chain of Italian origin, grown, pressed, and bottled in Italy. So that is very, very good. I like what I see on the label a lot more at Costco, so I'm gonna give the Kirkland and Costco the win this week when it comes to bulk store brand olive oil. My one caveat there is with the Kirkland brand. Now, when you look at olive oil, it has Kirkland Signature on there. Okay, here's the Kirkland Signature toilet paper. Here's the Kirkland Signature diesel motor oil. Now, if you kind of buy into the whole Kirkland concept at Costco, no big deal, you probably don't mind. But what if Exxon Mobil motor oil or Charmin toilet paper came out with a brand of olive oil? Would it seem like they know what they're doing? I don't know. So while we're on the subject of olive oils, the segment in last week's episode about the olive oils generated a fair amount of discussion on the old message boards. A lot of people were recommending to me to try some Greek olive oil, so I did pick some up at Costco, this Kirkland Signature Greek olive oil from Greece. Nice to know. Been using it this week. It seems okay. Not fantastic, but not terrible. Solidly okay. Okay, now for our 30 seconds of knowledge. We're gonna do a little mini review of this Coupe French fry slicer. Right off the bat, this thing has some pluses and minuses. It does a good job of slicing fries and making uniformly sized fries. The downside to it is that large potatoes won't fit completely in the slicer. You have to cut those, so you're gonna end up with a little bit of waste on your potatoes. If you're looking for a fry slicer, I would look for one that can hold a larger sized potato, less waste, longer fries. Sometimes this thing is very efficient and worth it if you're doing a lot of potatoes. Other times, if you're just doing a couple, I would much rather just do those by hand. There's no cleanup, not as much waste. So the Coop Fry Slicer gets a solid thumbs sideways. For poll results, we asked about sous vide cooking, awesome or disgusting? 72% of people said sous vide seems awesome. About 20% said gross and disgusting. I'm kind of in that gross and disgusting camp. Now, I have not tried sous vide cooking myself. I know people that swear by it. They absolutely love it. But I just can't bring myself to take a nice steak, put it in a plastic bag, and boil it. I just cannot get my head around that. I don't know what it is. It's almost as gross as brining a turkey. You know, brining a turkey, it sounds great until you open your fridge and there's a soaking dead bird in your fridge. Disgusting. And I just cannot bring myself to boil a good steak. Just me, but that's the way it is. Okay, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Go forth, do great things. Come back and watch some videos when you get a chance. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Uncle Scott's Pancast Podcast. Okay, that's it.